The Lion King game brought nightmares to many 90s children. Released in 1994, the 16-bit platform follows the progression of the movie, beginning with Simba as a cub and through his path into adulthood. Sadly, most of us never got to experience playing as adult Simba. The game features challenges such as a ridiculous monkey puzzle, a never-ending chase scene and a climb up an endless waterfall. The story goes that Disney instructed the developers to make the game hard enough that it couldn't be beaten in one rental period. The theory was this would force players to buy the game instead. The end result was a lion-themed version of Dark Souls. There are some amongst us, however, who are not phased by the path in front of them. Those that can take on the monkeys, the elephant graveyard and all the moments in between. And some choose to do this in the fastest possible time. This is the history of the Lion King speedrun. The Lion King game is made up of ten gruelling levels. Level 1 starts with young Simba in the Pride Lands, detailed in 16-bit pixel art, which was drawn by Disney's own animators. Simba primarily defeats enemies by jumping on them. He can also roar using a replenishable meter which can be used to stun enemies. The difficulty ratchets up with level 2's can't wait to be king level. This involves riding ostriches, getting tossed around by monkeys, and swinging from the asses of hippos. The developers included the cryptic text Roar at Monkeys at the beginning of the level to push players in the right direction. Trying to combine this with frame-perfect jumps proved too much for most average players. For those that were good enough, any childhood nightmares were fully realised in the Elephant Graveyard. This presented one of the most challenging levels of the game. This included fighting hyenas and vultures whilst attempting to not fall through bone ledges. Things get even more interesting after this with the introduction of the game's famous forward-facing stampede level. Here Simba has to dodge animals coming at him from behind while also jumping over obstacles. During the game's development this strange departure from the game's core platforming gameplay originally made Disney nervous. The meeting was even called with the development team in order to scrap it. During the meeting, whilst the Disney reps made their case to remove the level, the developers decided to boot up the game and play it. Seeing the level in action caused Disney to have a rethink and made the final game. Simba's Exile is the next tough stage on account of falling rocks, rolling boulders and difficult jumps. Once successfully navigated, the player can move on to the Hakuna Matata level. This stage was adapted from scenes scrapped from the original movie, with the main challenge being a climb up an endless waterfall before encountering a boss fight where you would literally be slapped silly if approached in the wrong direction. The remainder of the game focuses on adult Simba who is now older and stronger. Where previously you pounced on enemies as a young cub, you now had an improved roar and the ability to use claws in combat. The first adult level is Simba's Destiny which involves fighting panthers whilst climbing platforms in order to proceed. This is followed by the Be Prepared stage, which is another level adapted from scenes which never made the final movie. Be Prepared is an apt name for this stage with multiple lepers and hyenas. It also contains extremely frustrating bats who just love to knock Simba into the lava below. Moving into the home straight, the Simba's return level requires you to navigate a maze whilst again slaughtering hyenas at every turn. This level could prove devilishly tricky, especially when facing multiple hyenas on screen at once. The reward was to finally reach Pride Rock, which is the conclusion of the game. This involves multiple fights with Scar across Pride Rock, with, of course, a few more hyenas once again thrown into the mix. Defeating Scar leads to the completion of the game and some much needed therapy for anyone who had taken it upon themselves to experience the ending. So what brave folk decided to complete this lion-themed version of Dark Souls in the blink of Rafiki's eye? 
let me introduce you to our first protagonist, the forever immortal Freddy, Frezzy Man Anderson. Freddy Man was an old school speedrunner who ran many different games during the early to mid 2000s. On the 13th of December 2006, Frezzy Man achieved an any percentage time of 16 minutes and 53 seconds on the SNES version of The Lion King on difficult mode. He did this without dying once. Frezzy Man himself pointed out that his run was far from perfect, with a number of minor mistakes made throughout. However, he felt there was no major mistakes made and believed the maximum time saving which could be achieved was between 10 or 20 seconds. To prove the torment that this game has on many speedrunners, Frezzy Man decided against any further world record attempts. So let's break down some of the key elements of Frezzy Man's run in order to fully understand how he achieved such a strong time. The first major decision Frezzy Man made was to grab a health bug. Whilst this added a few seconds to his overall time, it enabled Frezzy Man to take more damage during the run, and many future speedrunners have used the exact same tactic. Whilst the first stage is short, it's still extremely tricky, and Frezzy Man utilised a number of small glitches, techniques and tricks to get through the stage and kill the boss relatively quickly. Frezzy Man then blitzes his way through the second stage, having learned the ostrich and monkey sections to a T. He roars only at the pink monkeys, which controls his direction of travel, whilst also executing perfect ducks and jumps throughout. On the Elephant Graveyard stage, Frezzy Man continues to use a number of tricks, including taking damage on purpose, which can actually save him time overall. He also uses a technique of jumping over hyenas in order to make them pant, rather than jump, which again enables vital seconds to be saved. He also employed a trick which was adopted by many future runners. This involves getting the hyenas positioned together on screen, which makes them easier to deal with. His main loss of time on the stage was trying to obtain another health bug which cost him a few seconds. Frezzy Man then made short work as a stampede level having memorised the required movements. However, he lost approximately 5 seconds on the Simba's Exile stage. This was due to be being hit by a few falling boulders and failing to execute certain manoeuvres, such as rolling over a couple of porcupines. On the Hakuna Matata stage, Frezzy Man quickly scales the waterfall. However, he lost around 5 to 10 seconds on the boss fight by missing one of his hits. Frezzy Man felt this was the biggest mistake that he made during the entire run. On Simba's Destiny, Frezzy Man also introduced a skip which was adopted by future runners known as the Claw Jump. This involves both attacking and jumping at the same time which enables Simba to raise his height slightly. By doing this, a runner can reach platforms without having to grab them first. This technique also meant that Frezzy Man could also skip enemies and an encounter with Rafiki which saved him time overall. The run of the Be Prepared level didn't look particularly glamorous as Frezzy Man takes a lot of damage. However, this is actually done on purpose in its easiest and fastest way through the level. Frezzy Man also blitzes his way through the Simba's return stage having memorised the maze-like route. It was now his opportunity to defeat Scar at Pride Rock. Frezzy Man again uses a claw jump to raise Simba's height slightly to reach Scar in one attempt. This prevents Scar from jumping over him. The fight with Scar is tough for Frezzy Man. However, despite this, he manages to throw Scar from the ledge and conclude the game. A world record time has been set, 16 minutes and 53 seconds. So how long did Frezzy Man's world record time stand for? 
Well, Frizzy Man himself stated that he was too lazy to attempt to break his own record and he was true to his word. In fact, no one managed to challenge his time in 2007. Or 2008. Or 2009. In fact, it was almost seven years until anyone was courageous enough to challenge Frezzy Man's record. Welcome to 2013, when Latin America decided to dominate Lion King speedrunning. The first challenger willing to take on Frezzy Man's record was an Ecuadorian runner named Albert. And on the 22nd of August 2013, Albert did something that no one else had managed in the previous seven years. He went ahead and beat Frezzy Man's world record time by nine seconds. So how did he go about breaking a record which had been in place for so many years? Throughout the early stages of the run, Albert wasn't constantly faster than Frezzy Man. Albert lost some time by falling during the monkey tossing section and he also experienced a difficult hyena fight and was hit by a vulture on the elephant graveyard stage. On the stampede section, both runners also used completely different movements, with Frezzy Man's run making Simba look like he was having some kind of fit. However, despite the different approaches, both runners completed the stage neck and neck. Whilst Albert pulled ahead in the early stages of Simba's exile, Frezzy Man once again pulled time back with a number of perfect jumps and actually completed the stage faster than Albert. Also on the Hakuna Matata stage, both parties were neck and neck with Frezzy Man again running the level faster for the majority. But it was a Simba's Destiny stage where everything started to click for Albert. By the time he reached the Be Prepared stage, he seriously began to believe that he may be on a world record pace. Well, when Frezzy Man set his original world record, he stated in a post he published alongside it that whilst he killed Scar pretty fast, it is possible to kill him quicker. So Albert went and did what Frezzy Man couldn't. He completely annihilated Scar. Scar, please. God damn it. Albert was the new world record holder with a time of 16 minutes and 44 seconds. Albert had beaten a world record which had stood for almost seven years. So would it be another seven years until Albert's new world record was beaten? Well, what if Albert's record was broken in under a month? And not only that, what if the record that beat Albert's time was also beaten in under a month? Well, that's exactly what happened. At the same time that Albert was setting his world record, two other South American speedrunners, Theo655 and Fonzoid, set themselves a challenge of completing the Lion King game in one attempt, without dying once. And 16 hours later, they managed to complete this task. So what does any sane person do after that? Well, they both decided to see how fast they could actually run the game. And during September 2013, under one month from Albert's world record, Theo655 managed to smash it by 18 seconds. So what did Fonzoid decide to do? Well, two weeks later on the 5th of October 2013, he did this. Fonzoid's route didn't include any new tricks, so how did Fonzoid manage to shave over 30 seconds from Frezzy Man's original world record? 
Well, Fonzoy's run was all about the optimization of movement and execution. And as the game went on, he simply got faster and faster and faster. The main trick Fonzoy used was the claw jump, which Frezzy Man had originally introduced. By attacking and jumping at the same time, it enabled Simba to gain additional height, and this enabled Fonzoid to reach platforms without having to grab them first. And Fonzoid executed these claw jumps over and over and over to perfection. In two months, a record held for over seven years had been broken three times by three different runners. And then everything went quiet. For a few days at least when Mexico decided to bring the party to Lion King speedrunning. And that party wouldn't be complete without the Mexican runner. The Mexican runner specialised in hard to complete games. Having seen Fonzoy's run this inspired him to see if he could claim the world record for himself. And a few days after Fonzoy's world record, the Mexican runner beat it by 6 seconds with a time of 16 minutes and 13 seconds. Now after beating the Lion King world record, most runners choose to stop making any further attempts. The Mexican runner was different, he was a grind machine, and over the remainder of October 2013, he did this. Idiota de mierda. So of course, like any time you break a world record, the first thing you do is casually take a phone call. Maybe because the Mexican runner knew there was much, much more to come. Mierda, mierda, mierda. And then, on the 4th of November, under a month since the Mexican runner started speedrunning the game, this happened. Yes, first try. That is nice. Yes, I got the damage boost. And don't screw up here, thank you. So we're having a run, actu actually. So yeah, this is a very good stage one. Get the jump, please. Yes, I got the jump. Nice, 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 nice. Ah, didn't got that one, but it's still okay, man. It's a very good time. Hey, wait. Oof. Please. Ah, oh, no thunder. Okay. If you don't get a thunder, you are safe for the rest of the level. Unless you die in this part so stupidly that I still can die, actually. I didn't die, wow. Whew, that was close, actually. Because that stone, you know, the stones in this game, just they just kill you straight away. No matter if you have full health or not, they just kill you straight away. This part is also amazing. Don't screw it up, Simba! 
Simba, Simba, Simba. Thank you, Simba. Nice, nice. Nice, that is probably a gold split, I'm not sure. Okay, please, please. Yes, when it gets tired after the first slash, it's, it's really good, man. Please, this part now. Yes, yes, man, I didn't go hit there. Yes, okay, this is good, this is very good. Oof. Okay, I got it there. Still can be the run, still can be the run. Please. Don't screw up, please, Scar. Don't fucking troll me there. Don't fucking dare to troll me. Asshole, don't hit me. Don't hit me again, you. Please. No, one more time. Here. There we go. I had a sup. Ah, huevo. Ah. Yes! Yes! Yes, man. Yes! Yes! The run, man! The fucking run! Yes! Oh, <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> the Mexican runner had become the first runner to record a time under 16 minutes. This was a minute faster than the record which had been placed just two months earlier. And he didn't stop there. Over the next few months, the Mexican runner continued to grind and grind and grind some more. Ahora le puta madre. Nah, it's okay, man. It's okay like that. It's okay like that. It's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Wow! Ah! Well. I split late, but uh, yes, man, yes! Another two world records in a day, man. Two fucking world records in a day, man. That's it, man. That's it, man. <laughs> okay, man. Still can be a potential world record. If I don't screw up this one. Yes! It's a world record, not the best, but it's a world record, man. World record! We get a new world record by TR. And on the 15th of March 2014, the Mexican runner did something incredible. Nobody knows it, but he had a secret smile. I can use it only for you. Yeah, this is the best level in the world, man. You have nothing to do, just. Jump like asshole, like ay, 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 from side to side, side side to side, hands up. Please, 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 don't fucking screw it up in the last part, please. I'm begging you. Please, please, please. 
Yes! Yes! I'm done with the game. I'm done with the game. I'm definitely done with the game. Goodbye game. I'm done with the game. <laughs> I'm done with the game, man. I'm fucking done with the game. <laughs> Oof. 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 Here contra. Oof. I'm done with the game, man. I'm just done with the game. Wow, I'm completely done. I'm done with the game. I'm done with the game, man. Yeah, don't, man. Do you think I can save time anywhere? Just in the be prepared, man. One and a half second due to bullshit. So I'm done with. I'm done. I'm done. I mean, this is 501 uh, SDA timing. So I'm done with the game, man. I'm done. By constantly honing his skills, a Mexican runner had managed to squeeze almost every possible second from the game. His final time save was for a newly discovered skip at the end of the first level. This skip involves grabbing onto the ledge after defeating the hyena, which avoids a cutscene being played. And as the Mexican runner said himself after his 15 minutes and 6 second run, he was done with the game. But unfortunately for the Mexican runner, some other runners weren't done just yet. It was time for some new kids on the block. On the 1st of August 2014, just over four months since the Mexican runner's 15 minutes and 6 second world record, a new runner called Inflames90 beat this time. By one second. Inflames achieved this by succeeding with a number of frame-perfect tricks and using a newly discovered rock skip in Simba's Destiny. This enabled a couple of frames leeway in the run in order to find that extra second over the Mexican runner's time. But as we saw in 2013, once a new runner makes a name for themselves, there's always others in the background ready to take the crown. And that's exactly what Alfredo Salza chose to do. On the 14th of October 2014, Alfredo Salza executed a run which was almost perfect. He managed to pull off all the tricks that were available to the community at the time, and this enabled him to do this. Alfredo Salza just run the first sub 15 minute time. Alfredo Salza's record was so strong that no one could immediately take the world record from him. In fact, it stood for a considerable amount of time. Compared to some of the previous records anyway. Eight months later, someone was ready to once again challenge for the crown. And once again, Latin America stood up to the plate. On the 12th of July 2015, a Brazilian runner by the name of Luis Miguel managed to beat Alfredo's time by five seconds in order to set a new world record of 14 minutes and 54 seconds. The main time save on this run was for a new wall clip on the Simba's Exile stage. This clip enables Simba to fall through the floor and save a number of seconds in the run. But unfortunately Latin America's dominance over the Lion King speed run was about to be put under threat. And sometimes you only need one runner to change the course of history. This runner would be Akateru from Canada, North America.
Akateru first appeared on speedrun.com with a time of 16 minutes and 44 seconds on the 26th of February 2015. At the time, this placed him six in the world. Like the Mexican runner before him, Akateru was a grind machine and he specialised in looking for how games could be optimised in new ways. And on the 18th of October 2015, Akateru set his first world record. Akateru did this by employing a number of tricks for the first time, whilst also hitting some frame-perfect jumps. The first frame-perfect jump Akateru hits is on the monkey stage, which enabled him to reach the hippos in one go, which avoids falling to the ground. Whilst Akateru didn't save any time on the stampede level, he also found a new technique which meant he could easily complete the stage. This involves standing on a specific pixel and not moving. That's right, a speedrunner could literally put their feet up for a few minutes and not have to do anything as it's impossible to fail the level. I'm pleased, however, that Frezzy Man never discovered this skip, otherwise we would never have got to experience Crazy Simba. On the Simba's Exile stage, Akatero employs a recently discovered wall clip which Luis Miguel used to set his world record. However, Akatero also exploited a skip he had seen on a tool-assisted speedrun video. This was on the Pride Rock stage and ordered Akatero to save a small fraction of time. The skip involves defeating Scar whilst he's off-screen, which enables Akatero to skip the animation where Scar jumps away. Akatero had set a world record of 14 minutes and 48 seconds. This was 8 seconds faster than the previous record. But unfortunately, whilst Akatero had been improving his times during 2015, so had other runners. And Latin America wasn't quite ready to relinquish their world record just yet. Eight days later, a previous world record holder stepped up to the plate to beat Akatero's record. By one second. That runner was once again Alfredo Salza. Sadly, this really was to be the last time that Latin America sat at the top of the leaderboard, because Akatero was about to take Lion King speedrunning to the next level, and he wasn't planning to let anyone stop him. As over the coming months, Akatero constantly found new ways to optimise how the game could be run. And of course, by doing this, Akatero's world record pace kept getting faster and faster. Akatero did this in the following way.
Nakatero had spent the last four months rewriting the rules of Lion King speedrunning. He had managed to shave almost one minute from the world record time of any previous speedrunner, which was way back on the 24th of October 2015. That time had been Alfredo Sousa's 14 minutes and 47 seconds. On the 11th of February 2016, Akatero's world record now stood at 13 minutes and 54 seconds. And then it really did all go quiet. Because a world record wasn't to be broken again for the longest period since Fresiman held the title for almost seven years. Using the Mexican runner's immortal line, the game was done. So let's roll forward to 2018, over two years since the last world record was set. Because a new skip had been discovered and there was only one person who was going to exploit it. It was time for Akatero to start breaking world records again. And on the 1st of July 2018, Akatero used this newly discovered skip to break the record he had set two years earlier by six seconds. But sometimes speedrunners need to sleep on things to understand how they can truly optimise an exploit. Because the next day on the 2nd of July 2018, Akatero did something amazing. Akatero had just shaved a minute from the world record he had set the previous day. He had set a world record of 12 minutes and 54 seconds. This was four minutes faster than Frezzy Man's original world record pace. So how on earth did Akatero achieve this? Well that recently discovered skip had just enabled Akatero to avoid almost a full level of the game and it was actually one of the easiest skips to complete across any stage. On the Be Prepared stage, Akatero simply had to get the first cheater against the wall and perform a simple slash and grab. By doing this, Akatero was able to clip through a wall, which places Simba at the end of the level. Be Prepared, a stage which had ruined many a speedrun, was now defeated. So did this mean that there would be no further world records? Not quite, because Akatero was still looking to find ways to optimise a newly exploited glitch. And a week later, on the 9th of July 2018, Akatero did this. Akatero had managed to shave another 4 seconds off the world record to set a time of 12 minutes and 50 seconds. But unfortunately for us, Akatero was done. Like all the runners who fell before him, after all the optimization and time improvements that had been made, Akatero simply hadn't a way to make any final time savings. There were no new exploits, there were no new glitches. So on the 9th of July 2018, Akatero decided to boot up the game for one final run.
Montero had pulled out everything in his locker. He had found another eight seconds in time saving through sheer determination and improvements in his running style. It was the 9th of July 2018. Akateru's world record stood at 12 minutes and 42 seconds. And that's exactly where the record still stands today. No one has managed to beat Akateru's time in the years since, not even Akateru himself. So will anyone ever beat the current world record? As we've seen in the world of Lion King speedrunning, never say never. The Lion King game may have been the nightmares of many 90s children, but there are those who have roared only at the Pink Monkeys. Those that can stand on a single pixel to complete a never-ending chase scene, and those that will climb an endless waterfall until they have reached the top. And some simply won't stop there. They will carry on climbing until they have reached the summit of Pride Rock and thrown Scar from the ledge. And some really will do this in the fastest possible time. This has been the history of the Lion King speedrun. Everything the light touches is our kingdom.